Hi everybody and welcome to the first 8 Under Danger YouTube channel. As you can see I have a really wide variety of all different tourniquets and there are fake ones and there are real ones but what is and are the differences and are the differences as described by some people for example on LinkedIn or on social media or is it just a very keen marketing strategy to make sure that nobody's gonna buy Aliexpress tourniquets anymore? That's what I want to talk about today. I was circling on social media because that's what I do all the time and I know that it is, this has been a topic in America for a very long time but as we see that tourniquets are more and more being used in a civilian practice here in the Netherlands we see that those questions start to emerge here as well and what what some people are saying is that if you use a fake tourniquet in a real life situation and something goes wrong, you have a very, very big problem. Especially if you are a law enforcement officer in, for example, Amsterdam and you would use a fake tourniquet on somebody who is wounded, would this for you as a bystander have major consequences? Somebody says it does, but is there any evidence backing his story up or is it once again just a very smart strategy or to say uh, then the second thing is is that they say that fake tourniquets tend to break quicker than the real ones and this has been a story that's been going on and on and on for years and years and now we're at the generation 7 tourniquet from uh, cat and um, the ones that I bought from Aliexpress look a little bit like the generation 6 tourniquet so the the knockoff tourniquets are one generation behind. But why would there be a generation seven if the generation six was the best tourniquet on the market? Because the generation six had his flaws as well. And there are two evidence-based researching researchers backing up my story that there are also generation six tourniquets that tended to break. Um, so it's not true that Generation 6 tourniquets do not break, the real ones and the fake ones always break. So if people say something like that to me here in the Netherlands, I always say, please just give me the evidence that backs up your story. And there isn't any at this moment here in the Netherlands as far as I know. So that means, yeah, completely in the style of my YouTube channel, we need to find out what is true and what is false, what is uh, real good mar marketing and what is really the problem. Hey guys and girls, I'm not telling you to just go on eBay or AliExpress and buy tourniquets for a, a few euros or a few dollars or whatever you pay with. But I think it's very important that we not just say something, but we have evidence, be, uh, evidence backing us up. We are in a medical field. That means that it is okay if you have your opinion, but as soon as you start selling your opinion as facts, something goes wrong. And that is what this channel is all about. I always try to find out statistics and research that backs up my story. So that is why I'm going to do a complete session of fake tourniquets facing the real ones and to see what is real and what is not real. So I hope you're going to like it because I sure as hell going to like it very much. I always like to do stuff like this and I hope that you're going to get a little bit wiser every every episode of First Aid Under Danger. So if you like this topic and I'm going to make like four or six different topics about the tourniquets. For example, we're going to start in the next episode by completely uh, dissecting a uh, fake or knockoff tourniquet and a real one just to see what the differences are and are there any differences and what are the consequences of those differences i'm going to talk to a lawyer about what are the consequences consequences for you as a user of the fake tourniquet is are there any big big uh, consequences for you or is this just a very nice story and we're going to check is it true that the fake tourniquets cannot uh, build up enough pressure to stop a bleeding as where the real tourniquets can. So those are a few of the topics that I'm gonna talk about in the next episode. So if you liked it, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and also please make sure that you uh, hit the notification button please if you uh, use the notification button you get an email from uh, from YouTube telling hey Nick has placed another movie on YouTube 
So I want to thank you for joining me at this moment. I hope you're gonna like it. For now, I want to thank you all. Have a very nice day and see you later and bye-bye.